I'm telling you the truth, mister. I didn't know that gun was loaded. Smiley. Oh, that silly doctor. You pulled the wrong tooth twice. This'll teach me never to build a fire under a bulky team of horses again. Hands up! Stay far away. Don't come any closer. Molly! Steve Ramsey, how are you? Hi. Who should I rather see? Hey, it looks like you had a little trouble. Oh, trouble? I don't know what it was, but the bottom dropped right out of it. How am I going to be a tinker's tinker and go into business with all of this mess? Say, what are you doing in these parts, anyhow? I haven't seen you in a coon's age. Not since River Bend, eh, Smiley? River Bend. Yeah, I remember that town. I'll never forget one low-down, sneaking, conniving, black-hearted swindler. You remember him. What was his name? He got drowned in a flood. You mean this man, Smiley? Henry Hardison. Henry Hardison, that was his name. He was a no-good somebody. Well, the world's better off with him dead and gone. But he's not, Smiley. He's not? I've got every reason to believe he's still alive and in Bonanza Town. Bonanza Town? Now, there's a coincidence. That's where I was going to set me up in business. What do you know about the place? Well, I know that there's a fellow called Craig Bozeman. He runs the place. Craig Bozeman? Just runs the town. Say, you working for the government now? Well, it's supposed to be a secret, Smiley. Yeah, I'm working for the Treasury Department. Trying to run down Henry Hardison and recover $30,000 he got away with near Dodge City. What makes you think he's in Bonanza Town? That money he stole was marked. Look. Oh, yeah, I see it. A double O and a double X. Hey, I used to have a widow woman down in Dallas, Texas, writing to me. She used to put those double O's and X's down at the bottom of the letter. That meant hugs and kisses. Well, never mind the widow down in Dallas, Molly. Have you ever run across any of these bills? I ain't run across any money, period. Nothing but chicken feed. Look, Smiley, when you get to Bonanza Town, I want you to get started in business right away. And keep your eyes peeled for any of this marked money. Sooner or later, it's going to lead me right to Hardison. How am I going to set up in business with all this mess? Oh, you find something. Look, Smiley, I don't know how I could ever solve this problem without your help. Is that so? Mm hmm Well, <clears throat> say, say, you can count on me. Who else can we count on? Who in Bonanza Town can we trust? One man. I've been told his name's Dillon. Judge Anthony Dillon. Judge Dillon, it's me, Marshal Reed. Why, hello, John. Evening, Judge. Come right in. Let me have your hand. of our lives, John. I went east to law school. You joined the Rangers, became United States Marshal. We're still friends, I hope. Still friends, Judge. Only being friends won't stop me from doing my job and arresting you. You never gave up on that case, did you? No. Nope. But I'll tell you this. 
It wasn't until 24 hours ago that I realized you were guilty. I'm taking you back with me tonight as my prisoner. Well, I'm glad it's over. You have no idea how I've suffered for that crime. You did a thorough job of covering it up. Must have cost a lot of money to bribe everyone concerned in the Donovan case. It did, and it was rotten money. You'll never believe it when I tell you what I've had to do for that money. I've lost the respect of everyone I knew. My own son despises me because I have to obey the orders of the political boss in this town. Why do you have to obey his orders? Because my soul isn't my own. An unscrupulous criminal controls every move I make. Who are you talking about? What criminal? I'll tell you. I'm not afraid of him anymore. He's my... <laughs> Trotter. Get inside. You heard him move. Judge, open up. Open up. I haven't done anything. Shut up, Trotter. Yeah, it's a good thing we were watching outside or we wouldn't have caught the marshal's murderer. Judge Dillon will sentence you to swing on the end of a rope for this, won't you, Judge? Maybe that'll be a lesson to the rest of your vigilantes. I didn't kill him, and you know it. Bill Trotter's right, Craig. The shot Forget came from... Forget it, Judge. I say he killed him. Check my gun, Judge. It hasn't been fired. And the glass in that window isn't broken. How could I have shot him? I just came here Did to you listen. you hear that, Smoker? The man says his gun hasn't been fired. And the glass in the window isn't broken. Hold that for the trial. It'll help show the citizens how legal we run things. All right, let's get him to jail. Sure, boss. Any other out-of-town lawmen move into my territory, they can expect the same thing. Mother paid him every day not to play the pipe. For it all goes to show you, it all shows to go you. You can stay in bed if you use your head, it all goes to show you. When people work, the money flows. They had a place to hide it. I'm not a bit afraid of work. I can lay right down beside it. It all goes to show you, it all shows to go you. You can stay in bed if you use your head, it all goes to show you. Robinson Crusoe, he worked hard to keep that island tidy. He didn't work a seven-day week, his job was done by Friday. It all goes to show you, it all goes to show you. You can stay in bed if you use your head, it all goes to show you. Have a seat, boys. You're next. I mean, you're next. Come on, Well, hey, wait a minute. I ain't finished with him. He ain't paid me yet. Where's Frenchy? Frenchy? Oh, is he the barber that owned this shop? I traded him a team of horses and a wagon for this shop. This is my shop now. Smoker? Yeah, boss. Be sure the new owner pays for his permit to stay in business. Sure. Didn't Frenchy tell you the boss gets a shave this time every day? Well, no. All he said was that he wanted to sell out before the business killed him. Now get started. The boss is in a hurry. And remember, if you cut him, there'll be a new barber shaving him tomorrow morning. Don't 
don't shoot. I, I, I got another one. Dad. Hello, son. This is a surprise. Change your mind about coming back home? No, I haven't, Dad. I want to know what you intend to do about Bill Trotter. Let's move on a little bit. Bill Trotter comes to trial in a week. If the jury finds him innocent, I'll acquit him. If they find him guilty... You'll sentence him to hang. You'll be murdering an innocent man, and I think you know it. Oh, I don't expect you to understand the reasons behind everything I have to do. But try and show a little tolerance, son. Everybody knows you've sold out to the crooked boss rule in this town. Am I supposed to be tolerant of that? I don't understand why. Craig Boseman's a second-rate tin horn gambler. I can't believe you're afraid of him, but yet you take orders from him like a slave. Why, Dad? Why? All right. You don't want to talk about it, but I'm doing something about it. I've sent for the Durango kid. You've sent for Durango? To head the vigilantes. With his help, we'll rid this town of Boss Craig and his gunmen, or know the reason why. Vigilantes to save Bill Trotter. We'll separate as we leave here. Then we'll meet at 2 o'clock at the south end of town. If there's any trouble at the jail, shoot first and ask questions afterwards. All right, get your horses from the corral. Hold it! Where are you men headed in such a hurry? An innocent man is going to hang for a crime he didn't do. When's this? The trial comes up next week. Then he's in no danger of hanging right now. A short time ago, one of you men wrote me a letter. I wrote that letter, Durango. And thanks a lot for coming to help us. I'm willing to help you men on one condition, that you let me do things my way. Well, we figured we'd want you to run things. From now on, Durango's in charge. Ain't that right, men? Yeah, yeah. sure it is, sure. What are your first orders? Put those rifles away and go home. I don't quite understand, Durango. I always thought you were a man of action. You thought right. When I need all of you, I'll let you know. If Smiley Burnett contacts you, do as he says. He'll be acting on my orders. Smoker, help! Hold 
together, man. Hey, boss, who was that just went out? He's out cold. I'm going to that building. Make sure he doesn't get out. Get up out of there. Oh, I'm sorry. You shouldn't have done that. You startled me. Something you men wanted? You're up to it, Smoker. Check the back room. We're looking for the Durango kid. Oh? The Durango kid? Uh oh. If he's in these parts, I'm believing. Anybody want to buy a barber shop pretty cheap? I'm afraid I can't help you, Mister. I've never seen Durango. You're a stranger here, aren't you? Name's Steve Ramsey. I'm hoping to get a job here in town. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Craig Bozeman. If you're really serious about a job, drop over and see me later on. I'll be in my office. Sure, sure. Glad to. Sit back. No thanks, Maya. I'll shave myself. I'll see you later. Oh, where, where are you going? I'm going to get a job as bodyguard to Boss Craig. Well, he's already got one. Smoker's his bodyguard. Now he's getting a new one. From now on, I don't care what excuses you think of. If Durango isn't caught before long, I'll have every one of you... <laughs> you think you've killed it enough? Why don't you get outside and see who threw it? shooting at, Ramsey? Some masked armory who just threw a rock through your window. It was up on the roof of that building over there, but he ducked back on the far side when I started shooting. Durango again. Warning to Craig Bozeman. Better take good care of Smoker, because you'll be in Boot Hill one hour after he is. Sign Durango. Hey, that means he'll be gunning for me first. What's the matter, Smoker? You're not afraid of Durango, are you? Sure he is. Anyone can see that. That's a lie. <laughs> There's only one reason you're not dead, Smoker. That's because Durango promised to put your boss in Boot Hill one hour after you stopped breathing. You're pretty fast with a gun, Ramsey. It's for hire. Good. In that case, you've got yourself a job. You bring me Durango's scalp, I'll cut you in on half of this town. Meanwhile, here's a week's pay in advance. Every one of these bills are marked with the double O and the double X. You know, if my hunch is right, Hardison's the real boss of this town. Craig Bozeman's just his front. Well, wherever Hardison is, he's doing a fine job of hiding out. Either that or he never gets a shave. Shave? Hey, let me see that picture, will you? You know he'd be hard to recognize if he had whiskers? Can I keep his picture? Sure, but don't show it around town too much. No, I won't. Is it safe to come in, Smiley? Oh, sure. Safe as apple cider. Come on in, Slim. Look what I got. What you got? All these tools, they all play music. Yeah. You in a musical mood? Yeah. You know Rudy Toot? Uh-huh. Play Rudy Toot.
Some people like to carve on wood and make a big impression. Some fellers paint a scene on cloth, they claim it's high expression. But when I feel creative like, there comes no feeling greater than to turn the lights down dim and low and play the sweet potato. A rooty toot, a rooty toot. A rooty toot, a rooty toot. A rooty toot, a rooty toot. A rooty toot, a rooty toot, you play the sweet potato. Just close your eyes and visualize it's after 12 or later. Before you kiss that gal goodnight, you play the sweet potato with the rooty toot, a rooty toot. A rooty toot. A rooty toot. A rooty toot, a rooty toot. A rooty toot, a rooty toot, 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 you play the sweet potato. Say, let's pick up where we were interrupted this morning. Let's do. How long will you be? No wait at all, mister. Get right in here. I'm just finishing up with this fella. Get right in there. Hey, wait a minute here. Two bits, two bits. Don't go away. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen. Listen, go, go. I'll shave you in the morning. Uh, right around this way, Mr. Hardy. Uh, say, that certainly is a fine crop of whiskers you've got there. How long did it take you to grow them, anyhow? I don't want nothing but a light trim. A little here and a little off there. Say, old Smiley Burnett's gonna give you about the best trim you ever had, I'll tell you that. Just relax here. That's it. Relax. Hold this, huh? That's it. Now, just relax here. Close your eyes. Sleepy sleep. <laughs> You know, somebody's gonna invent something like that sometime. Where, where's your hat? I'll, I'll brush you off. Hey, you trimmed a little close, didn't you? Let's look. Hey, you! Get in that chair. Get in there. My, my hand slipped. It, it was an accident. You're gonna be an accident. Well, what are you gonna do? You hold this. Rock a bye, baby. On a tree stop. Rock a bye, baby. I'd be glad to help you, Mr. Ramsey, but I've never even heard of Henry Hardison. You must have heard of him, Judge. His name was in all the newspapers a few years back. Henry Hardison? Henry Hardison. The name sounds slightly familiar. I'll tell you a few facts about Hardison. Then when I'm finished, maybe you'll have a better picture of the man I'm looking for. As you wish. Hardison's center of operations was in a town called River Bend. One day about four years ago, he had reason to visit a neighboring town called Gila Pass. His purpose was to convince a respectable rancher named John Avery that he should sell his ranch. John Avery, it seems, had not been easy to convince. I, uh, I think you're making a mistake, Avery. I'll have to be the judge of that, Hardison. It might be wise to reconsider my proposition. And it might be wiser for you to drop it. Your whole idea of using my ranch as a reservoir for a power project has been a fraud from the start. Better let us take care of him, boss. It's a pretty big risk for you. This time I want it done right. Just do as I told you. I'd have been better off tending my own affairs in Riverbend than coming here to meet you. I don't understand your objections to selling your ranch at tough price. But I do. You just want to use me as a front to swindle the people. And to prove it, I've hired an honest engineer to survey my ranch and publicly discredit you. Uh, you're a hard man to convince, Avery. 
You know, even your son Danny disagrees with you. You better leave Danny out of this. All aboard! I was already in the territory on business of another kind when shots brought me to the scene of the murder. Somebody's coming! Get out of here. I'll hold that Jasper off. What's the trouble? What's going on? Stage holder. They shot my friend. Didn't you take a crack at those two? Oh, I never fired a gun in my life. We didn't even have a chance. The first thing we knew, the stage stopped, and we heard a shot, and, and the holdup man came to the window and killed him. Did he try to defend himself? Well, yes, he had his gun halfway out. You're sure about that? Well, yes, I, I tried to stop him, but I didn't have time. Who was he, a friend of yours? John Avery. John Avery? Why, you know him? No, his name just sounded familiar. Well, you drive the stage in the river bend. I'll see if I can pick up the trailer of those two Jaspers. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't drive either. You see, I'm from the east. All right, get in the coach. Oh, no, no. Uh, if it's all the same to you, I'll, I'll ride up there. Think you can climb up there all by yourself? On time. Yes, it's uh, just about due. The river bend, an anxious group of people, including Smiley Burnett, were already gathered and waiting when we arrived. Hey, the stagecoach is coming now. Something must be wrong. That's Mr. Hardison on the driver's seat. Listen, I'm holding up my presses for some news. Where's my father? Uh, I'm afraid your father... <gasps> there, there, Miss Ann. We were held up. If it hadn't been for this man here, the robbers might have murdered me, too. I have my doubts about that, Hardison. You and your crowd would stop at nothing to get the Avery Ranch. Are you implying that I, I wouldn't have... put it past you to do anything? I do. You're out to hurt somebody. Let the kid alone. He's just having his fun. I'll take care of this hombre, Borgia. He needs a lesson. You're a little mixed up about that, Junior. Junior, why? Right. Danny, stop it. Well, I'm gonna stop him. Listen to your sister, son. I'm tired of hearing people tell me what to do. She's only trying to tell you about your dad. He's dead. 
John Avery out of the way, the ranch land Hollison was after, became the property of Dan Avery and his sister Ann. Well, surely those two were able to see through his plans. And yes, she refused to have any dealings with Hardison. But with a brother, it was different. He was young, headstrong, and reckless. Hardison figured if he got him in enough trouble, why, he'd hold the whip hand over his sister Ann. Wasn't too hard to play on Danny's weaknesses. That says you haven't got nerve enough to shoot up to town again. Just keep your mouth shut and let your money talk. I'll be back to collect. This is gonna be good. So you don't like Welchers, eh, kid? Look what's coming. Get up, Avery. Don't make any false moves. What's the idea? You're under arrest for helping to rob the River Bend Loan Company. Robbery? That's right. I've been wanting to slap you in the calaboose for a long time. But out of respect for your dad, I didn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about, Sheriff. It's your cut of the loot, ain't it? Where's your other two parts? Uh, I don't know. Somebody gun whipped me. You mean your horse dumped you? What's the trouble, Sheriff? I'll ask the questions. What are you doing out here at this particular time? Why, just returning from Gila Pass? Why? See anybody going the other way? Come to think of it, I did. Two riders, and they seemed in a hurry. And they ought to be. Them and young Avery held up the loan office in town. I tell you, I didn't have anything to do with it. Hello, Miss Ann. I'd just like to talk business to you under these circumstances, but have you changed your mind about selling? I certainly have not. Get the boys together. Their troubles are just beginning. Hardison then used every means to intimidate Ann Avery and acquire the Flying A Ranch. There was no limit to his violence. We can't expect the Durango kid to smash that gang single-handed. Dampeded our herds, burned our ranges and winter feed. Most of our boys have left and gone over to Borgia's ranch at double pay. They're tired of fighting fires and rustlers. I guess that fellow Hardison will stop at nothing until he gets his own way. I tell you, we've got to have help. I think Smile and the boys will give you a hand. You know I will. You've already done more than your share, Steve. Without a full crew, we just can't market our cattle. I have to admit it. Got to sell before Danny's railroaded to prison. Give me a little sundown before you sell, Miss Ann. What good would that do, Hod? You just sit tight and let me have my way. Steve, if he kills Hardison and goes to jail, I won't have a soul to turn to. You've got to stop him. You can 
Hold on, Spittle, Sheriff. Danny be eating someplace else tonight. Will you look old? No, open that cell and let the boy out. Come on, get busy. Good for you, Hart. I know you wouldn't let me down. jail. He's the one we're after. Sheriff? Nothing for sure, but we've got a pretty good idea now. Where do you figure Hard and Danny are hiding out? In that old camp on Rock Ridge. Want to come along? Well, I'd like to, Sheriff, but... Well, i get a little more surveying to do before I leave town. I see. All right. I'm afraid the sheriff's figured out Hart and Danny's hiding place. Oh, no. Yeah, you better get out there and warn them. I'm going after Hardison. If I don't miss my guess, she'll lead us right to Danny. And he knows too much for his own good. Come on. Sand, something's up. Danny, you've got to keep out of sight. What's wrong, Ann? Sheriff thinks you're hiding here. Steve sent me to warn you. Dirk and Flint, they must have trailed Ann. Yeah, that means they're here to shut your mouth for good, Danny. Well, I'll take them with me if they do. means they're going to try and switch the river into the old bed. Well, if they do, it'll flood the flying A and wipe us out. We'd better hustle. Smiley, you and Danny come with me. You fellows get out on the range and tell the boys to round up the stock and run them up on high ground. Right. Come on. Lead the way to the North Fork and keep your eyes peeled. This wagon's loaded with blast and powder, and I don't want to take any chances.
they're getting ready for a big blast. You boys hit them from the right side, I'll take them from the other. But don't fire till you hear my first shot. What you've just told me, Henry Hardison died in that flood. That's what everybody thought until the Golden Ace Mine payroll robbery. Henry Hardison was identified as the man who held up that stage. And you followed the trail of the marked money to this town? Yes, it's my guess that where this money is, Hardison can't be far away. Oh, but Hardison might be dead and somebody else spending the money. Yes, they might. Judge, is there any truth to the rumor going around that you take orders from Craig Bozeman, that you're planning to hang an innocent man on his say-so? Get out! No one can talk to me like that in my own home. Is that why your son left you? What do you know about Bob? Not much. Just that he can't understand the change that's come over his father since... Since... since when? Let's say since that marked money started showing up in this town. Why don't you tell me the truth, Judge? There he goes! Dear brother, I trust you found Steve Ramsey's story about me very interesting. Of course, it's a story you already know. Ah, too bad you didn't get a chance to tell him your story. I wonder what you'd call it. Oh, yes, the story of a good judge gone wrong. Ah, you were very glad to see me then, when you were in trouble. And very glad to use my money to buy witnesses to save your hide. Hmm. I even shot that marshal for you. He was the one man alive with enough evidence to arrest you. 
I should never have accepted your help. I should have admitted my guilt and taken my medicine. But you promised me you were going to reform. Yes, you said we'd both forget the past, start over and lead useful lives. Oh, but you've been very useful to me, Your Honor. Ever since we got your son out of this house, it's been possible for me to live here and carry on uh, business as usual with no one being the wiser. How about Steve Ramsey? Mm -hmm. Craig has hired him as an extra bodyguard. That'll make it very easy for us to set a little trap for Steve, one that he'll never get out of. Oh, Anthony, uh, run over and tell Craig I'd like to see him, will you? Morning. Judge Dillon has until 3 o'clock to resign. The Durango kid. That was pinned to the door. It's 2 o'clock now. If Durango does plan to show up at Judge Dillon's house, we're going to be ready for him. Why don't move the judge out of town until the danger's over? That's not my way of doing things. Ramsey, you go over to the judge's house and stay there till 3 o'clock. Durango does show up, nail him. Unless... Unless you're afraid of him. Just keep Smoker here from trying to drag Gulch me through a window. That's all. Get the rest of our men together. We're going to surround Judge Dillon's house, and maybe we'll kill two birds with one stone. At any rate, Steve Ramsey won't be alive after 3 o'clock. This straight. Go on out to the vigilante hideout and tell him that... I can't run no errands for nobody today, Steve. Something dreadful's happened to me. Now, listen. Tell Bob Dillon the time for his men to break Bill Trotter out of jail is 3 o'clock. But you don't understand, Steve. Tell him Durango said so. <laughs> We ought to know if Durango intends to show up. As far as I know, he's never broken his word yet. How long we gotta wait? Three o'clock. Durango doesn't show up by then, the fireworks start without him. Let me get Steve Ramsey. You don't stand a chance. Addison's probably got his gun sights trained on that armory right now. Strange. You know, Steve, I wonder what significance the habit of doodling has. I've been doing it most of my life. Looks like Durango isn't going to show up. Twatter out of jail. Hold it. Throw down your guns and reach. 
He's got him covered. Let's get up there. We'd better get to your father, Bob. He's in danger. So you tipped him off after all. Well, it was the least I could do. Brother or no brother, I'm gonna kill you. Henry, don't! For your own sake, don't! <laughs> for a lot of his past mistakes, Bob. I will always be mighty grateful for all you've done, Steve. Well, I'm mighty grateful, Bob, to you and all the others for helping me catch up with Hardison. Hurry it up, Smiley. We're ready to go. Just give me one little minute, Steve. Just one. Jumping shades of Halloween. Smiley! I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. Come on, Smiley! Steve! Oh, Steve! Look at the hair I growed. Ain't that nice? Look, I took a little bottle and a whole bunch of bottles and mixed them together and I can grow hair. Boy, we're gonna, we're gonna make a million dollars. I'm gonna build a factory, then I can buy me a new team of horses. Oh, go on and laugh. I won't look so funny when I got a million dollars. Hey, you know what? You take a little bottle and a big bottle and mix them together. And you... <laughs> 